um, to everybody. Thanks for joining us uh, for another week at uh, for our Wellbeing at Home live session. Um, nice to see you familiar faces again and a special welcome to those of you joining us for the first time. Um, so I'm really enjoying these sessions, hosting these sessions uh, for you, um, especially getting all these wonderful facilitators on board. And um, they're all very kind enough to bring us uh, their expertise into our homes. Um, someone's raising a hand, sorry. Let's just have a look here. Uh, can everybody hear? Everyone can hear and see and... Yeah, okay. Okay, good, good, good. Everyone's good. Okay, so um, today um, our session is on relieving some of the tension and discomfort in our bodies. And I'm sure most of us have points with this reoccurring pains and stiffness. Um, so sometimes I know from personal experience, sometimes our bodies um, adapt to that and we carry that kind of pain and stiffness or tension around with us and we start to think it's normal we you know we just kind of get used to it and and, and move it around with us um, and then a lot of us go and uh, have a massage to kind of relieve the, that tension but if you're like me after a day or two um, the the tension just reappears and I, I suffer with my upper back I think that's quite common but I have a, you know, I go and have body work or, or a massage and it feels great uh, for 24, 48 hours and then it comes right back. So um, when a friend introduced me to Carol, I was uh, really keen to find out how I can relieve the tension myself and avoid that build up. Uh, so um, I'm personally really excited about today. Um, if you have read Carol's bio on our website that went out in our newsletter, you'll see she has a wealth of experience um, in this area of holistic health. And if you haven't had a chance to read it, um, uh, I'll just tell you a little bit about her now. Uh, so Carol has been a pioneer in the area of holistic health for, for 30 years. Looking at her, you would, you would never imagine that. So she's obviously doing something right. Um, Back in the day before it was really trendy, Carol published books on the subject um, about holistic health. And her book, which is actually called Holistics, um, looked at how, how we can live in, in a healthy way, both um, it, mentally, physically and emotionally. So imagine that back in the day when people couldn't even bring themselves to talk about mental health. Carol was writing this whole kind of integrated approach to, to looking after our health. And so she's certainly a pioneer. Um, Carol then went on to teach her own integrated system of wellbeing and fitness classes at some of the top studios in London and appeared in the media as a wellbeing fitness trainer and guru. Um, so she's got a very impressive list of clients and knows how the human body works in great detail. So, uh, Carol, thank you for joining us today. Pleasure. Yeah, say hi, so everyone can see you. There you are. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah. um, so, before we start the session today, I just wanted to ask you a few questions, if that's okay. Sure. Um, so, uh, you have a lot of skills, your bio, um, with regards to um, fitness and holistic health. But today we're concentrating on corrective exercise. So can you just explain to us what exactly is a corrective exercise specialist, please? So I started off being trained in yoga and Pilates and body conditioning in the days where there were videos um, and then DVDs when you wanted to do an exercise class, you couldn't get it on app. So that's how far back we go. It's kind of more like 40 years, which is a bit embarrassing. And um, I have old injuries as a dancer. I had scoliosis, couldn't walk properly for three years. And I then, several years after that, got a client who I was absolutely winning with. And then I hit a brick wall. And that's when I was introduced to corrective exercise. And, it, and it, 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 it's the flip side in the sense that it's not about any of you joining my belief system. So if I was doing, say I was teaching yoga, 
when I was younger, wonderful, but I had no idea that there were some bodies that were so hypermobile that I was actually hurting them. There were other bodies that were so tight um, that it strained them. And the people who had issues, whether it was a shoulder impingement or a meniscus problem on the knee or a bulging disc at L4, L5, I had no idea how to deal with it. So corrective exercise is about taking each person's body and seeing what they need. Um, if somebody's in pain, if they have injured themselves, you know, when you sprain your ankle, what do you do? If you're lucky, you might have a good physio. They'll give you painkillers. If you're lucky, they'll give you a few exercises. That's about the best that most people experience that level of detail for something that's happened to them. So correct, corrective exercises takes the body, whether they are a sports professional, top of their game athlete, or somebody who just is in trouble, it fits in and looks at the body, looks at where it's shifting in its weight from one side to the other, rotating around um, the pelvis, if someone's got a forward head posture. And instead of just looking at the site where the problem is, usually if you look above and below, you find out where it comes from. So somebody may have a, a meniscus problem, but if they've got a hitch up on one side and they developed a bit of scoliosis, Often the problem with the knee is coming because it's pulling. It's pulling on the structures and the tissues above and below. So as a corrective exercise specialist, we have to have that knowledge. We have to know all the moves in Pilates, all the moves in yoga, all the moves in the gym and beyond. Um, and start to put a program together so somebody can literally start to progress and get out of trouble, whatever that trouble is. And then that progresses on to conditioning, performance, teaching the body how to mobilize. We get most people haven't gone through the baby developmental patterns. And so they get stuck at that point and we start to introduce those movements and hey presto, they can do stuff they've never been able to do. So when somebody doesn't get the uptake, they're doing loads of tummies and they just can't get what they want with that or something's getting in the way, hopefully we can do our best to rectify it as much as possible. I could spend the whole hour giving you examples, but I don't want yeah. to see you drop off my yeah. <laughs> It's fascinating. It's really, I mean, it's really fascinating what you say about kind of going to any specific discipline, whether it's yoga, Pilates, uh, or whatever else. Um, but if you have certain issues in your body, you have to really address those specifically. So it's not kind of a one size fits all. It's really interesting. So your, I guess your knowledge of physiology is immense. Um, it, it is as well. Yeah. We, we were going to talk about Invictus later. I, I do this scar tissue work, which I found three years ago, absolutely mind blowing. I've got, I thought at the end, if, if people were interested, you can see what, what it does to a scar and then what happens is that brings back function into other areas of the body. If anyone's had a cesarean, they know about emotionally what that feels like, the numbness, no sensation, the back's funny because they've had an epidural. And so to know it from all those angles is just so useful because at the end of the day, I only really want to help someone. It's very nerdy, but it's incredibly satisfying. And the main thing I get back from people is, they feel like they're learning their own language. You know, it's not about whether they're good at exercise or not. I was incredibly self-conscious at times in my life. I didn't want to, to go in with a bunch of people who looked fabulous. And so I had all of that self-absorption going on. Um, and I, so I naturally gravitated where I could help people. People who are disabled, disabled. I work with Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, you know, one end of the spectrum, children, and then top athletes. And it's, it's very, very interesting. It's very gratifying. Great. So what, tell us Not what, causes, um, what causes the buildup of tension in certain parts of the body? Like, you know, it's very common to have it in the glutes, the upper back, lower back. Is it all down to posture? Posture is definitely a driver in the sense if you can imagine how many hours a day that you are sitting or standing in your given posture, you know, and if you're hitching to it be because you're using your hand to do your iPad and your iPhone, um, of course that absolutely feeds into it. And so you get these tissues patting up. So 
just to give you an idea, if you've got a kyphotic forward head posture, you know, and you are, your shoulders go with it, you are shortening muscles down the front, you are weakening them, you're sort of collapsing them. Um, you're overstretching muscles around the back, right the way from the bottom of the spine all the way up. They're overutilized. You get overutilized muscles, underutilized muscles. Then you get somebody who goes into exercise, starts doing something, or they reach up for a jar, and suddenly their, their shoulder or, or, or somewhere in the bicep goes, and they're in trouble. They have no idea what they've done. They think it's happened in that moment. It's not. It's happened over a long period of time to get there. Um, and so for me, the most important thing I do with anybody is I just get them to start to open those structures up. Now, we've all heard about stretch, stretch, stretch. It's not all about stretch. It's about lengthening. And sometimes when you lengthen, you have to go in. Like you say, you go and get some body work done. Um, sometimes you need to extend, but when you extend, if you've got people who've got a problem with the back, guess what? When you stretch your hamstring, which is such an important area, you don't always want to go through the spine. So um, I'm, I'm digressing a little bit. Coming back to your point about stress, the gut is a major factor in this. Most people have got backed up um, digestive systems. Their livers are maxed out because they're either on some medication or they're having too much sugar and fats in their body and what happens is, is they get deferred indigestion and very often around the scapula and the rhomboids if um that's not if, if that's constantly feeling niggly and like you put your elbow in there and it's not resolving that's often referral of the gut then you've got the emotional stress then you've got stress from um, tightness from overdoing it. So I work with people in films and I had one actor who I worked with a couple of years ago who had to be in great shape because he was doing a lot of very intimate scenes and um, he's not a tall guy but he was stretched. He'd really worked his body to the max so he, he, he kept getting so tight his back would go. So what we had to do was just to, to create a little bit more space in his body and start a that by doing the trigger ball. Interesting. It's fascinating how all of these different aspects from the gut um, to no, emotional really. issues can really affect so yeah. <laughs> affect this tension in your body. It's fascinating. But this it is really is. Day. this is another subject. I think we can spend hours on that. Um, what's, so what's that's why we thought that's why we thought that the trigger ball would be very good because of course um, withholding breath, which we don't realise. So we I think most of you have learned how to do breathing. You've had some wonderful breath work. Is that right? Just yeah. not. I've only got a few people on my three. Yeah, yeah. We've done some breath work issue, um, sessions. Yeah. Yeah, so we didn't, Stella and I decided we didn't want to waste your time by doing that. Um, but just to remember that when you are breathing, not to use your shoulders to breathe, to let it go into the diaphragm and fill up through the body. And the trigger was lovely because if you use the breathing that you've learned with that, you will release the tension. Um, and you, all of you will need different strength trigger balls. Um, some of you need it to be very, very, very soft. I usually um, try and have both hands under the head, but that's not going to work for any, everybody. If you've got a shoulder impingement and if you've not done the ball work before and you're very, very tight, you put the opposite hand behind your head to where the trigger ball is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my, my knee. So I just need to, to introduce a couple of people here. Okay, before we do, before we do, we'll... we'll um... Before we move on to that point, I did have some other questions, but we'll leave them to the end because I think we need to get going with the session. But if people couldn't get hold of a trigger ball um, or trigger balls for today, they can use tennis balls, right? Or what else could they use? Yeah, oh, absolutely, tennis balls. <laughs> with West London Mission, um, we've had a potato. Potato, okay. All right. Um, we've had a lemon. Somebody who had a knotted rope. We've had it all. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, everybody on the call, if you haven't managed to get these beauties, I ordered these off Amazon actually. Um, <laughs> if you haven't managed to get these, uh, see if you can get a tennis ball or a potato or a lemon or something similar that you can use. Um, so, should we get going then?
Let's get going. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to bring my, my niece in, Eloise. Hello. To meet everyone, because we thought it's much easier if I show you on someone. Do you want to put your back to the camera? Like yes. So we're going to start putting the trigger ball around the scapula. So from the upper trapezius here, down to the middle of the, of the scapula, you're going to find spots that are tight and tense. Okay, and I'm just going to line her down on the side. Now, if you find it is tight, sometimes wearing a sweatshirt or a tracksuit top, it just cushions or a towel in between you and the ball. It just cushions what's happening with you. Okay, so I'm going to get this little ball here, and I'm going to roll her over, and I'm just going to put that. Let's go in a little bit. It's important that it's not on the bones at the moment, certainly not on the spine. And I'm going to take her opposite hand and put it under her head so that it supports her neck. All right. And then I'm just going to get her to take a nice deep breath into my hand and breathe out. Now, if that's really easy for you, you can take the hand a bit further out to the side. And if you can handle it, you have both hands under the head. It's interesting doing this with a group of people because I usually usually do no more than eight. Um, but the important thing is, is just to stay on the area for as long as you want to stay on it. And if anybody wants to ask me a question or give me some feedback, please do. I'm going to come up to the camera and see if I can see who's doing what. Okay. Oh, that's good. And I can see you much better there. Pamela, how does that feel? Yes, good. So you've got it on your right hand side. Do you want to put your left hand under your, yes, under your head, sort of near, and the other one if you want right under so you lift the head off the floor and then it's on top of your hands and you want your knees bent just to protect the base of the spine how are you doing robert you're okay um stella am i able to hear people if they want to talk um, everybody can um unmute themselves if they want to if you want to ask a question, just unmute yourself, but please put yourself back on mute afterwards because there's feedback otherwise. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, um, and it's, but it's any, anyone can just do that themselves. Lovely, and it's great for me to get some feedback just so I, so I know how to guide you. Yeah. Okay. So the breathing, the breathing is really gonna act to release that tension and Obviously, I want you to go on the sore spots because that's what you've got to release. Some of you, your fingers are sort of not even touching. It's good to have your hands one on top of the other. Under your head, yeah. And then your head on the floor on your hands. That's it. That's great. So I'm just going to watch and see where you are. You can take it. Um, we'll take if you're going to take it down. Don't take it further than the waist yet, because we're going to do the top part of the body and then we're going to do the lower part of the body. And if we get through this quite quickly, I might take take this into doing some decompressions. So you may find that on the side that you've got the ball, that you're a little bit twisty in the pelvis and that your elbow is higher to the ceiling. Ideally, again, you want to make sure that you can be as level as possible. That just kind of shows you how tight it is. And again, you may want to bring your arm out to the side. Yeah, just Nicola, that's great what you just did then. That's good. Oh, um. Mary asks, um, how do you get at gnarly bits under the scapula or around the ribs, around the front, very tight band there? Um, on the back, am I able to see her? 
Mary? I can't, what? she's not on my screen. There's no way I can get her no, on my screen. Okay, so. let's have a look. Oh, I see. Oh, wow, I didn't know you could do that. So if I scroll along, I might get to see Mary. You just, okay, so where, where is Emily's? Um, you roll your body over it. You roll yourself over it. Um, let me just, can I swap with you? Yeah. Am I here anywhere? Oh, yes. Okay, so you roll your body on it until you find the area. You can roll on it. Now I've got it. And I'm, and I'm gently rocking into the scapula, away from it, into the scapula. The beauty about the trigger ball guys is that if you're gentle with yourself and you're breathing your body will guide you how to get to where it needs to get to if i was doing an advanced one i'd show you how to go on the scapula how to go on the super, super and infraspinatus how to ease all that out but i think we're just going to keep it really simple today um Estelle, can you ask mary if she's if she's feeling a little bit better uh, Mary, she can just put it on chat. Hi, yeah, I am. Thank you. I just was wondering whether you rock into it. I have done trigger ball work before, so lovely. So you know, but that's lovely. You can when yeah. when 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 you or anyone feels like a real hot spot, then that's the one where I usually say to people, you can you can sort of gently seduce around it and then go on to it and just stay there until it begins to go from sort of a level seven, eight down to a three, four, and then move on. But it's really, really useful getting your questions. So please, if anybody's not quite sure, um, ask me. And you know, you really can spend time on this. Um, if any of you want to go onto the other side now, please do. I realise that with so many of you, I'm not going to get the timing exactly each one of you. But hopefully there'll be enough today that you'll be able to practice this on your own. There's a document that I've sent Stella that has the full explanation and guides and pictures of all of this that if Stella would be able to email it to you. Yes, we'll do that. Lovely. There's a lovely spot just above the waist, which where your kidneys are, when you go on that, that's an amazing release. And sometimes people will feel that reverberate all the way down to the base of the spine. Actually, Rachel, Rachel, who is my, my um, significant other in, in, in cool health, who is a, a master corrective exercise specialist, I'm just gonna have her doing the trigger ball on herself. Sure. Yes. So that people can kind of just keep their eye on her and, and see what she's doing and, and copy in. And go for the glutes. Oh, yeah. Trish, have you got a ball? Great. Oh, I haven't got your sound. How do we get your sound up? Oh, if you take yourself off mute, then I can hear you. Hi, sorry, I wasn't prepared. I have either a line which is too hard or a tangerine which is quite soft. But I'll go for oh, okay, let's see, the, let's see the too hard one. The one the that's line. too hard. Okay, so do you have anything up there that you can put the lime under that creates a bit of a cushion? Yes. A cushion. Okay. I mean, if that's not too much, do you want to give it a try? Sure, yeah. I'll put myself off mute so that. Lovely. Oh, somebody's already gone onto their bottom. Very nice. Now, I tell you what to do. Now, this is Anne. Anne, what's quite nice is when you sit, is to sit and take the leg out to the side. So you're getting it right on the 
the glute med. So bend your long leg, your long leg, bend it right down and then come onto your elbow. Can you feel the difference in depth? That's great. Oh, ah, were you on the calf? I would do or the glute. Do, so Are you me. able to unmute yourself? Okay. Fantastic. Sorry, did I interrupt you doing the calf? No, I was no. I was copying the um, so your this is, this very is little assistant. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. yes, you were. So. Yeah, you can move all around there. You can come back oh, onto yeah. it. It's quite meaty. Any of you that want to come down to this area. Now, if you're like me, when I first started doing the glute, it was agony. So I lay down and I put the ball just on the side and I drop my knee down to the side. And again, you've got two or three spots in that part of the, in that area, that will be quite tight and you've got to totally allow your weight to come through it. So you can either lie down and start it in that way and if you're, if you're used to um, trigger balls or you're brave, you can come up and try and do it with the balls. The balls that we've got, this little baby orange one is quite soft. And that's a lovely one to start with. It's on the document that Stella's got to send you. The blue one is a harder version. We're going to go to the neck in a little while. Usually on the neck, we would use a, a not spiky one, but it won't hurt you if that's what you've got. Um, and um, Tristan, the line will be fine on the neck, okay? I have a couple of questions here. Yes. Um, Emily, uh, I'm using a tumble dryer ball. I think it's about Excellent. the same, it's the same, Emily, than, as the trigger balls. I think it's quite similar, isn't it, Carol? It is. Again, it depends on your frame. Some of you might find that the tennis ball um, is a little big, but it's, it still will do something for you. And, and the, the tumble dryer balls are virtually the same as a tennis ball. Tennis ball, great for the occipital, doing the occipital and all around the neck and the head. So definitely, definitely good for that. And um, just be gentle when you're going into other parts of the body in case you think, oh God, this is just a little bit hard. Sometimes it's just the size, but you'll get to know that in time. But it's absolutely fine. Great. And then Lisa asks, can you go up to shoulder instead of down? So up yeah. in an upward motion instead of down. Definitely. You can just move it all around, right? You can just... Yeah, you go everywhere. Intuitively and, move it uh, around. To, you really uh, can go everywhere. Yeah. Uh, equally, if you've got a, a fairly big ball, very often when you, you remember I was talking about the deferred indigestion? Yeah. So you can actually take a ball, let's say like this, and line your stomach and put it around where you know it gets caught up around the, the duodenum, for instance. Lie on your stomach, take a deep breath in, and breathe out, pressing the ball in. You can hear the stomach start to gurgle. Fantastic for helping to release migraine or headaches. In, at, at that area, in the, in the gut? That between would the gut and, yeah, between the gut and then going back into the upper trapezius and between the scapula. So that's really good for migraines. Um, can you talk about the, difference, the, the different types of balls of three different sizes? Uh, yes. Um, well, you've not just got different sizes. You've got you've got different um, different strengths. I, I, I've actually got different uh, balls, but I don't know where they are. So, if you have a look, for instance, at the green and the blue, you'll see that their spikes are quite different. So you've got different knobbly bits, and, what, and, and the black one is really hard, that's super hard. You've then got the sort of the, um, I love the tune-up, the yoga tune-up balls. This is one of two balls that is contained in a net. So lovely for rolling down either side of your spine, lovely for the calves, lovely for the quads. So I will use this to roll on my quads and my calves, and especially people who've got knee problems, 
I prefer that to a foam roller. Or I like doing both. Um, and behind the neck. And then you've got the, what we call the TP balls. The <coughs> PTTherapy.com balls. These are lovely. They've got fabric on. The red one is a big, hard, all singing or dancing. And this one is slightly gentler. Not much, but slightly and smaller. And they're shaped in a certain way. They're really super clever. And then the other thing you can do, let me see if I can show you. So you get a lot of people um, who do foam roller and that's absolutely fine. But the one area that the foam roller and sugar boarding doesn't get is the thigh. And so you can sit on a bench or a chair if you can take your hips back far enough, put the ball in the middle of the leg and extend it. It won't extend fully and you're doing direct myofascial trigger release and you can move the, the, the ball up but you've got to keep your back absolutely straight and your chest up and that's very very powerful. So that's just to illustrate a little bit about how much you can do with these wonderful balls. So um, Robert, when you're doing that, go on that, go on that one again. Can you go on your ball again? It's diff yeah, difficult yeah, yeah. with the spike. Yeah, it's difficult on the skin with the spikes, but let's try it. Okay. When you sit, can you sit your hips back and your chest yeah. forward, like really lifted up? Yeah. Lock yourself in that position and very slowly extend, very slowly. Very Don't slow. lean back. It, you'll hardly be able to move, all right? Because okay. I to lock your posture in place. But can you feel that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Is, it, is it powerful? Yeah, it's quite strong. <laughs> yeah, quite it strong. really is. Yeah. yeah. So the idea is not to straighten the leg, okay. but to get your pelvis back enough when you straighten it, when you straighten it, it just goes in there. But that's the, that's the position you want in. And you're ever so slightly hitched on one side. Just mm. try and get yourself level as possible in the shoulders and everywhere else. Okay, lots of questions coming in here. Um, yeah, I want them. I want the, more questions. Um, if, more um, if you have one side of the body which is tighter than the other, um, obviously in disciplines like uh, yoga, you do equal on each side. But a good question here, should you just work things work it more on one side or do you do, do you need to balance it out do you need to do the other side too so always need to do the other side um uh one of the things we were talking about corrective exercise is that we have no idea how many compensation patterns we set up it's one of the major things we look for in corrective exercises where is somebody compensating how is that affecting them so we all perceive that our bad side is the worst side and so we've got to put a lot into it and yes you may have to in this instance with the trigger ball you will have to give it more time but equally you must take care of the other side as well and, and, and not miss it or skim over it okay good question yeah it's a good question the other one is lots of people want to know about the neck lots of us suffer with neck so which ball and okay, so how do we do the neck yeah. okay so shall we go to the neck next? Yes, please. Okay. Right, so um, now somewhere, I did have something to tie my hair up with. Very unprofessional. Okay, so. I am gonna take the TP ball, guys. In my hand I'm going to straighten this up so you can see me on the mat. What if you don't have one of those um, Carol? A tea people? You, oh no no I mean it's spiky. Spiky. Oh you can use anything. You can use a spiky as well can you? You can use a spiky. Yeah. Um, there's nothing wrong with using any of it. It just has to have a degree of comfort for you. Okay. Okay I'm just gonna have that. Okay. Right, let's get this down. Sorry, am I am I able to ask a quick question about size? Please. Um, because obviously, I mean, I've got, I, I don't know if you can see, <laughs> I've got quite a big one and then a smaller one. 
Now, who, who's, who's showing me? This is Sharon. Sharon in the middle, yes. Yeah. Sorry, that's probably better. So, so for the neck, presumably you would want one that isn't going to a smaller one rather than a big one, or? Well, I think, I think a tennis ball size is perfect for any neck. Okay. Because it's, so when you're doing your shoulder, you know, that flattens onto the floor. If you were lying on the floor, it flattens onto the floor. When you put your head on the ground, you've got this big gap, haven't you? Yes. So if you have something too small, it's not really going to resonate. But, that, but you, you can use a small one because what I'm going to get you to do is to hold the ball like this. So you've got it in one hand, the other hand goes behind it, and you put it under your head. You put it under your head on the bony bit first, just to get used to it. And you just roll around, close your eyes. It's really nice with, with trigger balls, guys, to be sleepy. Mm -hmm. And so you move yourself around, but I'm completely relaxed on the ball with my hand supporting it, so the ball can't suddenly escape. There must be no tension or effort in your neck at all. I can move my hands and roll my head and I can start going down the side of the neck and a bit like your buttock, I can feed into the ball. The, the good thing about your body, guys, is that you know how deep you can take it or how deep you want to go. So this, so the line, the lady with the line, this should be okay. You can get into those little crevices, just support it in, in your hand. Yeah? Did that answer the question? Yes, she says yes. Lovely, thank you. <laughs> um, Any other questions? Is it, uh, someone has an acuball, is that good? Where can she use it, or he? Not sure. An acuball? Yeah, I don't know what that is. Do you want to show us whoever it, that this is? How would I access that? If they go on speaker view. Yeah, if I'm not sure who's um, asked this question, but if they can just, if they want to, they can show us the I've, I've, I've got it. I've got it. Great. I've got it on speaker view. If that person wants to speak, they'll come up. No, they don't want to. That's okay. Um, okay. Uh, Claire asks, can you go down the middle of the neck? Um, I tend not to go on the spine at all. Okay, good question. Um, it's, um, I, I, you can trace it around that lovely occipital bone. That's fine. It's not that you can't, but, you know, unless I'm working with somebody one-to-one, -one, if I'm working like this, I would just stay away with it. You can work towards it. You can work into the spine. You can go along lengths either side. You know, you can sort of almost like you're doing this, yes? It's like you're doing this, but you're supporting it by holding the ball with both hands. Yeah. If I was going to do something along along the, the spine um, and I wanted to stretch it out, I would simply just bring my elbows together and gently stretch it. But again, if I don't know, you know, what um, what pathology is going on in someone's neck, if there's somebody saying, you know, can I put it on, and they've got some kind of a slip disc or they've got a problem you know in, in any of, of that area then um i wouldn't advise it unless i was with them and i knew exactly what was going on okay Anne asks is it normal to feel pain in the side of the forehead from doing the ball Anne, can you let us know yeah i get a kind of referred pain if i put it on yes so that's just telling you, that's just telling you a little bit of, of, of tightness between one point of fascia tissue to another. So what she can do is she can lie the head down, um, either on a, a, a little book or um, a, a thin yoga block, and she can take the ball and she can just go to the, the, the point where she's got the tension and roll on it like that, just massage it a little bit. She can trace it along the head if she wants, back to that point. And you can be as gentle as you want. You know, you can take the pressure off. And how you take the pressure off is you just put, you slide one of the hands away from the ball um, with the knuckles into the floor so that you can just 
it's a little bit more of a roll and then you push your head into the ball as much or as little and roll it back into the side where the pressure is. If you try that, let us know if that helps. Yeah. There's a, a question from um, Rosie. Hi, Rosie. I have been to a class using trigger balls, but my back was a bit sore and very red afterwards. Did I go too hard or was the ball too hard? It was spiked. It put me off trying again. So what do you suggest if I try again? I've had, I've had so, you know, I've had people particularly ring up because they understand the idea. So there are some instances, if somebody's got particular problems where trigger ball isn't for everyone, it is for most people. What I usually say is wear something really thick. So I just recently had um, a wonderful NHS nurse who is seven and a half months pregnant. Um, how I met her was she was burnt at the, across the chest at the age of one. So that's compromised her tissue everywhere. And with the pregnancy, she hasn't been able to breathe without a lot of pain. We've done a lot of scar tissue work. It looks and feels very different but the baby's put pressure on her. So we've been through the breathing and we started with the trigger ball and I knew she was gonna bruise up easily. So what we did was we wore a really thick track suit. Um, I had a block under her head. So there was minimal pressure between her areas of, of, of the upper trapezius, scapula and rhomboids and this. And she very, very gently did it and built it up. And by the end of the week, she was able to breathe without any pain she fell in love with the trigger ball which she wasn't in love with on the first day so it's all about going slowly gently so do you really think with rosie then maybe she shouldn't use a spike ball she should use a kind of more um, surface ball our, our nurse did use a, a spike ball but it's a it is a really gentle one okay um and i think um if you are all right with this stella yep. rosie should do a little FaceTime with me so that I can understand more what's feeding into that. Absolutely. Rosie will put you in touch directly with them. That's it's much, much, very much. Yes. So my yeah. answer is my answer is generic. Yeah. Um, again, never ever ever force yourself in a class or otherwise to do something that you're starting to feel is not right. Yeah, exactly. So probably with somebody like Rosie, I probably, if I suspect the kind of things that might be going on, I would start with something called Eldoa. And Eldoa is a way of decompressing the muscles that uses um, a way in which you activate the muscles and hold in a, an isometric way. They're incredibly powerful and with the most amazing results. So. If, if my hands represent all the different things that I could show you and talk to you about over time, we're not even covering half of my little nail. Okay, we can do another session. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a popular one. Um, thank you. Thank yeah. You. I, sorry, thank say, you. Rosie, did you have a question? Sorry, would you, did you want to say something? No, that's great. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I, I had only a thin top on when I did it first time, wearing something thicker and maybe using the, the softest of the three balls. I could yes. try it again just gently. Well, uh, you know, and there may be something else that, that I put in, and when you tell me a bit about you, I will definitely be able to, to find the missing links. The, it's why I do this work 99% yes. of the time with one person, one-to-one, -one, or very small groups of people. But even then, I end up getting them to call me, and I'll, I'll stay up till midnight seeing a group of people I've taught, but it's worth it for them to know what works for them. Yeah, yes, great. It's an individual, um, exactly. Thank you. Thanks. Pleasure. Another question, loads of questions. <laughs> um, uh, Dee, do you, Dee, do you want to just show the ball that you think is hard, too hard to use? She's not really sure what to do with it or how to use it. Yeah, thanks. It's, I've got this black one here and it just doesn't move or have any gear. Oh, sorry, I'm just, just let me put my glasses on so I'm not... <laughs> I've got right, that. let's have a look. And I just don't know how to use it compared to the others. Am I, say that once more, is it I'm true? Sure how to use this black ball, which is really hard. It has no give like the spiky ones. So how and where do you use it? Oh, there it? you are, there you are, Dee. Right. 
Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, that's huge. Wow. Yeah. Do you know I've never even seen that black ball? <laughs> <laughs> so, sweetheart, if you were to take your hand, yeah. how, big, how big is it? Okay, it's not too big. No. I think the nodules on there, though, are quite aggressive. Yeah, they are. And there's no giving it. So you see this, this orange one? Where am I? Oh, have I gone? No, I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose Dee. We can see oh, you. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, so D, yeah. come back to me. Talk to me. I'm here. Hi. There you go. So I'm more like your yellow ball. Can you just okay. squeeze that for me? But your yellow ball is bigger than mine, so I've probably got a smaller diameter. And you look like you're quite narrow. Right, yeah. Yes? Yeah. Um, I've got this one that's really soft. Now, the really soft ones, did you try that? Yeah, I like that one. I was going to say, that might really work nicely. Thank you. And it, it's, um, you know, Stella said in her, her letter to us, she said you need to just buy a mix of balls and then see how it kind of yeah how it works. I wish there was a better way. I wish we could try them and then send back the ones that don't work. Somebody yeah. should come. Maybe I'll come up with that one day. But um, I think you've definitely understood. Yeah. When you get when you get this document, yeah, I am pretty sure you're going to love this one. Okay. And Thank that's you. on there. Thank you. With the with the link. That's so helpful. Thank you. That's not a problem, but I love you using that soft one that you like all over, just really getting used to it. And you can use it at the back, back of your head. You yeah. just put a bit more pressure on, yeah? Perfect. Thank you. So Thank useful. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. There's some other, there's loads of questions here. I think we're going to definitely have to do another session. Um, okay. It, okay. <laughs> uh, so many great questions. Um, what do you recommend for piriformis syndrome can you do anything to help with the groin strain some people yes. think about yes. feet yes, yes. and trigger yes. points in feet sure. um, um, there is a great and i don't know why i haven't got it up here um there is a great ball for for plantar fasciitis and for hands no but there's one that i get that's particular i don't think it is but if you give me my phone is that my phone Guys, do you mind if I just look at my products? Because I know no. what you're talking about. Please go ahead. I suffer massively from plantar fasciitis because I do lots of yeah, work. Yeah, okay. So we, and it's we just, just it, it's so difficult to get rid of. Yeah, it's horrible. It's really yeah. horrible. Um, and then there's a psoas as well, tight psoas. We've got that question. I think we have to another session, guys, with Carol. So, guys. Go into, if Carol's up for it. <laughs> what are going to have to do? Because, I mean, how many people are on this session? We've got over, I think, over 100, 120 or something, 100, a lot. But I think we're going to have to go, maybe go into, um, maybe we do specific parts of the body. We just concentrate on all specific issues. And then... Um, so, I'll tell you what I think would be really good, guys, because this is, it's a big deal. And we've also got Rachel here, who is equal mastery to me. Rachel, come here. Come right down. Hello. Um, <laughs> So when you've got the groin, you've got piriformis, you've got all of those issues, they need to be dealt with not in a generic way like this. Um, I'm going to look, for, can you take that, I, I want to look for this so I can give yeah. you, you, you carry on explaining what I mean by that. Yeah, it, I guess in terms of piriformis syndrome and plantar fasciitis, everybody will develop symptoms for different reasons, although the symptoms usually present to be the same way. So most people with plantar fasciitis will experience the same sort of pain, but why they have plantar fasciitis might be different. So their, pro their programs for treatment will be different. Um, there's not one, one thing that we can give everybody for piriformis syndrome or for plantar fasciitis. Um, that said, there is one thing for plantar fasciitis that is is quite common to give and it's rolling underneath the arch of the foot with the trigger and ball. I'm just going to get the ball um, in a minute. But. So yeah, Carol's just looking for the specific ball. Now you can use a tennis ball. You can use the ball that she's trying to find. Um, but it's important to go gently yeah. in the beginning uh, because it can kind of feel like bubble wrap in the beginning. It might feel like um, your fascia is kind of uh yeah i don't know how else to explain it other than cracking and popping um it feels great once you've done it for 30 seconds or so 
But again, depending on why you have plantar fasciitis, we might have to deal with a hip issue um, that is perpetuating the cycle. So no matter how much you roll out the bottom of your foot, your plantar fasciitis isn't going to go away unless there's appropriate strengthening for the tibialis anterior or the calf muscles, um, stretching of the hamstring. So it can be quite complicated. Can you see that? Foot rubes. Rubbies or rubbies. rubbies. That we can, we can, yeah, we can send, if you just send me that link, we can put that out into the I'll, I'll just send you that picture. Yeah. It's we can. in the trigger point document Oh, is it? Well. It's in the trigger point document. That's great. Okay. But it, it, it's, it is specific. The other one that I like to use to begin with is this one. It's very gentle, this small orange one that you've got as well. But it, it's exactly like, like Rachel said. Um, you are, if I do a scar, okay, would you like to see a picture of a before and after scar? Yes, please. Okay. If I'm doing a scar, I've got two things I'm looking at. One is the scar itself, but the other is all the tissue that feeds into it. And that's exactly what we do when we're looking at somebody's body. So you've got plantar fasciitis. It's good to look at the ranges. It's good to see what's happening at the top of their body. It's good to see what's going on with the leg and see if, you know, that the, the, the heels pulled out or if they're flat footed. There are so many different things that you look at. So you're looking at easing out structures that feed in and out of that area. And looked about how it started. Remember what I said earlier, things don't tend to happen overnight unless you've had a terrible fall or you've whiplashed yourself in some way. Those things that creep up on you and suddenly you wake up and you've got a problem. That's when you've got to investigate what's led into that. But if I get my iPad and show you, Is anyone falling asleep with boredom with any of this? <laughs> Are you all happy bunnies? I think everyone. Or is there anyone who would like to speak up and say they're not a happy bunny? There's lots of, there's just lots of questions, but. <laughs> there, there it is. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know if you can, can you see that? Can you see that scar? Can you see it well, Stella? Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, okay. So that was with the, the right. That was before. That was before. Now, have a look at five sessions later. Oh, yeah. Can you see the difference? Yeah, massive improvement. Absolutely massive improvement. Now, some of the work, obviously, I did on the scar. But this is someone who's had four cesareans and a tummy tuck, which was shockingly done. So what happened because of that and a couple of hernias, she also had um, a hernia. No. Yeah, oh, she split her linea alba. Yeah. You know, when, when in pregnancy, sometimes you split the linea alba here. There's a, there's a name for it and it's gone out of my head. But... So she'd been sort of trussed up really with the stitching. And um, what had happened was it all started because she came to me with a, remember I said about the digestion around the scapula? Mm -hmm. She had a 24 hour, seven days a week, however many months in the year, problem in that shoulder. And I thought that's strange. This does not feel like it's, it's an issue at the shoulder. What it was, she had, um, then I found she had a problem with the bowels and she had horrendous migraines. So I cleaned up what I needed to clean up internally on the food side. I then just started to do the scar work and I found that where she'd had all the surgeries, the hernias, um, the cesareans, they were all adhered onto various different structures internally, including slightly onto the duodenum. So softened them all up, started to get everything moving again. And guess what? The shoulder pain went and the migraines are now so far less, do not last a couple of hours, let alone three days. But it was a partnership of things that were the problem. Mm -hmm. It's never just one thing. When you have a problem that really sticks, it always involves often nutrition, digestion, you know, what's, what the scar tissue is internally as well as externally.
I just wanted to use that as an illustration, you know, to show you just how when you know when people talk about me and holistic health, I'm not I'm not a you know just a, a, a an egghead about anything that's complementary. Orthodox and complementary are very important. They should exist side by side. But we have things that we're in charge of that we could do and change and learn about. And often the, that information has not been readily available to people. Um, Absolutely. It's fascinating how, as you say, it, it's all interrelated. And yet we really usually go and deal with one specific injury. You know, yeah. your physio or doctor just saying, or just deal with that you know, specific injury. But it could, you know, start from wherever and also be related to our digestive system. Yes. Um, I, it's you know look we're I'm really aware because this this session could go on for um, hours. There's so much to do um, and talk about. There's there is um, you've there, got questions, haven't you? Sarah? Yeah, there are, well, there are a couple of questions here just from from um, uh, from from the people on the session that I think yeah. we can look at. But we can if you're okay with doing a, a follow up, I think it would be well received, and we can we can deal with specific. Um, areas. Um, there, is, there is a question from Odia which says, "How soon after surgery can you work on scars?" Three months. Three months. Okay. There are instances where I might work on it a couple of weeks earlier. Um, I will often, I often like to get sign off. And interestingly, it doesn't matter whether your scar is twenty-five years old. I, I will show you something, you know, a lot of people say, well, that's great, but what, you know, my scar is 25 years old, you know, what am I going to do? And it's, it's just as effective. Okay. Right. What's the best we Okay. Right. I'm going to take you guys out of the light. Can you see that? Yeah. Got that? Yeah. That's in Bosnia, where I went out for two weeks to work on the war veterans and people who were raped and shot at and, well, a number of horrendous things. And that was a, a very nasty scar. As a result of this, she could not really walk or move very well, um, let alone exercise. And my goal was to leave her with a corrective exercise program. So... Where's the sound on this? Bear with me, this is worth waiting for. Let me say it's a very pleased how she looks this scar and uh, how she feels about it because pain is much less, swelling is less. Yes. And uh, when she came last time, this in the middle uh, looks like to explode. Can you see the difference between what you just wow. saw and that? Wow. Isn't that quite extraordinary? It's, it's, very, that, it's, it's, it's really is. That um, was nothing other than one two hour session of scar work. I tell you what, if it blew her mind, it blew me completely out the water. Um, when, I, when I work on a scar, I have no idea what's going to happen to it in terms of, you know, I don't target, target look, but the main thing was that we got enough function back in order to give her, and I've got pictures of her doing exercises, little videos, and we just did this solidly for two weeks with people, which kind of is, you know, it's why, it's part of the work we did with Invictus and what we do with the, with the you know, all the Army, Navy and Air Force veterans. Yeah. Um, there are questions here. Yes, of course, you can contact um, Carol for an individual consultation. We'll send that as a follow-up or her details with the recording as we usually do so you can contact Carol directly and you can also ask Carol because there are some questions about scar work it's like how can they find people who are skilled in this in their areas and absolutely you know, all of that well, yeah yeah I'll, I'll do I'll I'll liaise with you after this so we can get that information and put it in there. But then also you guys can contact Carol of course and I would say I would highly recommend if you have um chronic conditions or issues uh perhaps invest in um in a personalized consultation because 
I think that could uh, really help long term. Uh, but but let's let's organise a, a sec separate session. And now that we, it's almost like an. It, this is fascinating because it's almost like an introduction um, to the work and to the trigger balls. And I think the next session we can go into um, specific areas of the body. Um, I think what we can do, Stella, is we can put we can work out a questionnaire together and yeah. find out who's got what going on, so that perhaps I mean that it's. It's wonderful that so many of you have, you know, turned up. I'm completely humbled by it, but I'd like to be able to give you something more satisfying. So it may be that we just do smaller groups. Yes, yes. Just, we'll feel our way through it. Um, yeah. yeah. Just to say around the scar tissue, we have a phenomenal team of people in this country. Um, they're small. There's not more than about 200, 250. Um, they're spread around the country. I have had the honour to work with a lot of them because I'm now um, assisting Sharon Wheeler and Dran Travortha and Emma Holly in teaching. So that's that's been a big step for me this year. But they are the the, the people are phenomenal. Yeah, really. And just to, I mean, just to, before we finish off, um, Carol does a lot of charity work under the Healing Hands um, organisation. And um, has worked a lot with veterans and has worked with Invictus Games. Um, so she has a very big heart and um, has helped a lot of people. Um, and also with the scar work for the, for the veterans as well, right, Carol? Yes. Um, the, uh, I feel passionate about all of them. Invictus came out of a lady called Emma Holly, who's one of the main teachers in the country. It came out of her desire to be able for us to give people who couldn't access this stuff something back. And uh, I ran, because she was away, I ran a team of seven people at the Big Invictus Games last July, which was just unbelievable. Working on amputations, working on um, scars, but I was also able to give them the corrective exercise and all the uh, other types of treatment. And they were just the most fantastic people, you know, that, that, that you've got somebody who's got, you know, th three limbs that have been impaired and they're out there doing this, this competition. And it's, oh, you'll get me crying in a minute, someone can say. It's, it's inspirational, very inspirational. Um, so we're out of time, everybody. Thank you so much for attending again. And thank you, Carol. It's just been amazing. It's really yeah. <laughs> could spend the whole day with you just uh, delving deeper into this. Um, just one more question, because I've, I've had this a few yeah, people have asked. Um, could, can people do this daily as a daily routine? The trigger ball, yeah. um, when you first start doing it, you may feel a little bit tender. So I always say to people, leave it a day go back to it. But the idea is in the first two weeks, if you're doing it, you're a novice at this. It does take about 40, 40 to 50 minutes when you first do it, just to find it all and feel it all, give it some space. At the end of two weeks, if you're doing it consistently, it will be one of those things, you come in, you've got a bit of a digestive problem, you've got a bit of tension, you'll roll on the ball for five, 10 minutes and it's done. Wonderful. Thank you. Great. Carol, thank you. We'll be in touch, everybody, um, about further, more focused sessions. We'll probably just have a limit on the number of people on those, but um, uh, we, can, we can look at that. And uh, feel free to email, email me um, with any specific questions or areas you want to cover. I know you've been doing that up until now, so feel free to continue with that. And... Um, have a lovely weekend. Um, we don't have the weather that we did last weekend, but um, have a nice restful and nurturing weekend. And we will get the um, document out to you, which really explains about breathing and the trigger ball and it gives it a context so you'll be able to follow that. Yeah, we'll do that. We've got the document and we'll, we'll send that to you. Wonderful. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, I'm so glad to leave it to you.